Okay, so today we're going to talk about random uh, variables. A random variable assumes the value based on the outcome of a random event. Um, we use a capital letter like uh, capital X to denote a random variable. A particular value of a random variable will be denoted with corresponding lowercase letters like um, lowercase x. Um, there are two types of random variables. There are discrete, now this is just basic mathematics. Discrete random variables can take one of a countable number of uh, distinct outcomes. For example, the number of credit hours. Continuous um, random variables can take a numeric value that has a range, um, the cost of books. Um, discrete is countable, whole integer numbers. Um, usually positive, where continuous could be a decimal or a fraction. So when you can buy a book for five ninety nine, uh, that's not discrete. That's continuous. Continuous things tend to be things that you can measure heights of people. Although you can make it discrete, right? If you round it uh, to the nearest inch. So anything that has a decimal or a fraction attached to a whole number, that's continuous. Discrete tends to be whole numbers. Um, a probability model of a random variable consists of the collection of all possible values of a random variable and the probabilities that the values occur. A uh, particular interest is the value we expect a random variable to take on. Um, noted by mu, that's the Greek letter mu, for a population mean or e of x for the expected value. So the expected value of a discrete random variable can be found by summing the products of each possible value by the probability that occurs. Mu equals e of x, which equals the sum of x times the probability of that x occurring. Now, be sure that every possible outcome is included in the sum to verify or and verify that you have a valid probability model to start with. <clears throat> For data, we calculated the standard deviation by first computing the deviation from the mean and squaring it. Um, we do that with discrete random variables as well. Variance, um, for example, is <coughs> um, sigma squared, which is... sorry, excuse me, the variance of x, which is equal to the sum of the difference between the actual x value minus mu squared times the probability of x occurring. Now, the standard deviation is just sigma, um, which is the standard deviation of x or the square root of the variable of x. So um, variance is the square of standard deviation. Not much has changed, just the way that we calculate it. Um, adding or subtracting a constant from data shifts the mean, but doesn't change the variance or standard deviation. Um, <coughs> so when we add a constant to uh, the mean, it'll shift the mean up or down. But when we add a constant to the variance, it doesn't change the variance, basically. So... Consider everybody in the company receiving a $5,000 increase in salary. In general, multiplying each value of a random variable by a positive constant multiplies the mean by that constant and the variance by the square of the constant. And so here's what that would look like. Um, consider everyone in the company getting a 10% increase. Okay. So, in general, the mean of the sum of the two random variables um, is the sum of the means. The mean of the difference of the two random variables is the difference of the means. If a random variable, if, if the random variables are independent, then the variance of their sum or differences is always the sum of the variances. Um, in chapters 21 and 23, we will use these variance formulas to help us study the difference between two proportions and two means. Um, the variance formula um, should feel a bit familiar. Um, finding the new standard deviation works just like the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, they, uh, 
we'll we'll go over this in class. Most of the time, you're going to do this on the calculator, but you're actually using the Pythagorean theorem to locate the distance from um, the best line of fit. <coughs> Sorry about that. Random variables can take on any value in a range of values called a continuous random variables variables i'm sorry let me say that again random variables that can take on any value in a range of values is called continue the continuous random variables man i did that twice the normal model is a continuous random variable okay so <clears throat> good news nearly everything we've said about how discrete random variables variables behave is true of uh, continuous random variables. Most of it's the same. When two independent continuous random variables have normal models, um, so do their sum or difference. The, this fact will let us apply our knowledge of normal probabilities to questions about the sum or difference of independent random variables. Um, what could go wrong? Probability models are still just models, right? So it's a best guess. Um, models can be useful, but they're not reality. There may be a parameter, and we've talked about this a lot, there may be a, a parameter that we're not necessarily considering um, that could have an influence on what actually happens in reality. Um, question probabilities as you would the data. Um, and think about the assumptions behind your models. If the model is wrong, so is everything else. Um, Early on, we were talking about uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of parameters um, that can have an influence on a specific parameter. And so we, we talked about causation and correlation. And uh, there could always be a third parameter out there that has an influence. So your probability model, while it may be pretty good. It may not t weigh in on that other um, parameter or variable, and that, that could be what's wrong. So um, we're going to do the same things that we did before to double check and make sure things are um, accurate. So in other words, don't assume everything's normal. Not everything is. Um, you must think about whether the normality assumption is justified. Watch out for variables that aren't independent. You can add expected values of any two random variables, but you can only add the variances of independent random variables. So that's the other thing we got to think about. <coughs> Don't forget variances of independent random variables add. Standard deviations don't. Also, don't forget variances of independent random variables add even when you're looking at the difference between them. Right. Addition and subtraction are basically the same thing. You're just adding the negative number. Um, don't write independent instances of a random variable with notation that looks like they are the same variable. Well, that's important. Um, math is a language. Uh, it has the same rules as English. Um, we're going to make sure that our formulas uh, have the proper uh, formality to them, just like you would writing a paper. It really does help. A lot of times when we do math, we, we somehow we get stuck in our head. We're going to just write this down real quick. Really, no, write out the whole formula. Make sure you're notating which variable is which. Use the proper notation, whether it's a capital letter or a lowercase letter. All those things mean something. And the, the better you get at doing that, the more you understand why the letter's capital, why another letter's not capital, what's X, what's Y. It really does make a difference. Um, we know how to work with random variables. We can use um, the probability model for a discrete random variable to find its expected value and standard deviation. The mean of the sum or difference of two random variables, discrete or continuous, is just the sum or difference of their means. Um, and for <clears throat> independent random variables, the variance of their sum or difference is always the sum of their variances. Um, lastly, some are differences of normally distributed random variables also follow normal models. So for the AP exam, though, finding the expected value from a probability distribution is a common multiple choice question on the AP exam. So everything that you do in this chapter, make sure you could do it um, 
in the spring. If you are creating a probability model, make sure that your probability sum up to one. Uh, that's the best way to figure out if you're doing the right thing. Take all the probabilities, add them up. This should equal to one. Uh, make sure to think about the independence before you find the standard deviation of the combination of the two variables. Really, that's important. And that is it.